you have to forgive to move on. At least this is what we often hear when we go through self-help books or you come here on this platform, YouTube, and look for ways to move on. One of the things you will be told by the motivational speakers and the self-proclaimed some of the self-proclaimed psychologists is you actually have to forgive to move on. But the question begs is, uh, is it a must for us to forgive to move on? And then we need to ask ourselves, what does moving on mean? Does it mean letting go of the past and finding your yourself in a new place or does it mean ignoring what happened and trying to move to a different place either mentally or physically or even spiritually so we need to understand these two aspects forgiveness and the relationship it has with moving on are they directly related or is it something we are just trying to force into happening? As I was going through this thought process this morning, I tried to think of some events and some people who really hurt me in the past or events that caused me immense pain. And I tried getting myself into or I try to quiet my mind to come into a place where I would tell myself, okay, it happened and now I need to let it go and move on. But I kept asking myself, does that mean I ignore the fact that they happened or what is it? How, how can I move on from this? So today I want us to understand if it is possible to actually move on without forgiving someone and maybe to help us understand we have to ask ourselves what is forgiveness and how does it happen and I think the best definition of forgiveness is one that I got from Oprah Winfrey she says forgiveness is simply giving up the hope that the past could have been any different meaning you get yourself to a point where you convince yourself peacefully not by force peacefully that these events happen these people walked into our lives they caused the damage they did and it is gone yes we have the scars we have the pain we have the trauma, but the event happened and it is gone. So forgiveness is you getting yourself to a place where you accept that it happened, but it is not here anymore. It happened, it's gone, it's in the past. So you simply let go of that hope that it could have happened any better that the bully at school could have been your friend instead of someone who hit you every other time. That the spouse you are married to wouldn't have been as abusive as he was or as she was. So, you know, holding on to resentment and holding on to the past is what keeps you in that place. And it is what keeps you from forgiving. So, Letting it go is you convincing yourself that it could have not happened any differently. Those people were structured the way they were. Those people had those behaviors. There is nothing you could do to, to change or to make those events any better. So again, the question begs, must you forgive to move on? now that we know what forgiveness is. So like when I was starting, I said, 
when you go online searching for help, psychologists will tell you that you haven't healed because you have not forgiven. You have not been able to move on because you have not forgiven. You are at a bad place mentally because you have not been able to forgive. But is it about us or is it about the offender? So when forgiveness is an act that you do because you're forced by the people around you or by the community or by the content that you consume, if that act of forgiveness is something that is forced, it is, in short, you are coerced into forgiving. For example, we talk of this young lady who has been sexually abused, maybe by a relative or a friend. And the mother, let's say the, the, the culprit or the abuser is an uncle. So the community or the mother or the close family, one of the close family members will come and tell the young lady that, you know, this is your uncle. If we expose him, it will be bad for the family and for the community. It's a taboo for such things to be spoken about in our community. So the best thing for you to do is forgive him. Let's just act like it did not happen. Forgive him. Let's bury it. Let's, let's throw it in the past. So this young girl will say, okay, I have forgiven my uncle. I'm letting it go. I will never talk about it. Or... You know, uh, if it's a murder case, the community comes and tells the offended that let's settle things out of court. Or if it's by a powerful family, they threaten your family and say, if this thing goes to court, you guys know you don't have the money to handle this thing. So if you go to court, you stand the chance of losing. So how about we just settle this thing out of court? So the weaker family accepts to settle the matter out of court. Maybe their child was killed or mauled by the neighbor's dog, the rich neighbor's dog. So the weaker family lets the case slide. But emotionally, psychologically, where does it leave the mother to the child or the girl who has been raped? Yes, they have said verbally that yes we forgive and we are letting it go but mentally psychologically where are they are they at a good place as well does the act of forgiveness give them a closure does it bring them to a place of peace so yes we can forgive everything and anything but if it is coerced if it is done from a place of being forced then it is not the best and if that is what you went through, then it is not possible actually for you to move on after the forgiveness. And I put it in quotes. So I think instead of you forcing yourself to forgive and to move on, the best thing to do is to build a support system around your, your emotions and feelings because forgiveness is more about the emotions and the feelings that we have as opposed to thoughts. Because the people who tell you, you know, you can meditate yourself into forgiving someone, maybe it can happen, maybe it is effective, but they tell you that think of this person, try to forgive them and let it go. They, they attach forgiveness more to a thought process than a process that needs to go through emotional and you know psychological uh, what is the term you take stock of your emotions and feelings because when somebody offends you usually it is not your thoughts that they tamper with they tamper mostly with your the unseen part of you the emotions and the feelings so I think it's good to build a support system around your emotions and feelings. Accept how you're feeling. Most of us deny the thought, the, the fact that you're feeling pain, the thought you're, that you're scared, the thought that you're feeling betrayed. We try to push it, you know, sweep it under the carpet. 
So I think the best way is to accept that these feelings are there. Allow yourself to feel the pain for as long as it takes. Allow yourself to feel the frustration. Allow yourself to feel the disappointment. Allow yourself to feel the, the rejection. Let it flow inside you. Do not push it back into your thoughts one, because one day they'll still come forward and they will affect you. So allow them to, to be present. Go through them. Digest them. You can even visit a psychologist if it is too heavy for you. Visit a psychologist. Let them take you through the process of healing. And then once you're able to go through these thoughts, these emotions, without feeling so much pain, without feeling that, like you're carrying a lot of burden, without feeling like you have a lot of resentment against the person who did this, then you can come back again to yourself and tell yourself, yes, now I am ready to give up the hope that the past could have been any different. This is the past. This is how it made me feel. This is the scar that it has left me with. I accept it. And now, because of my personal well-being, I am letting it go. You see, it is different from being told that for you to move on, forgive this person. For you to move on, let this event go. You're being coerced. This is different. You have built a support system around yourself, your emotions and your feelings. You have gone through these emotions, either alone or through the help of a professional or another family member. And slowly, with time, you have been able to heal yourself mentally, psychologically, spiritually. And you have reached a point where you are at peace with yourself. You have gotten to a point where, personally, from within, you are able to lift that load. You are able to talk about the events. You are able to define this person without shedding a tear. That, to me, is the ultimate moment where you let go of the hope that the past could have been any different. That, to me, is the moment that you forgive. And that, to me, is the time where you can say, I can now move on. So yes, forgiveness is an ingredient, one of the ingredients you need to move on, but it must be a process. It should not be coerced. So sit down with yourself today. If you have been in the process of forgiving someone, sit down with yourself today and ask yourself, is this coming from me or have I been coerced? If you feel coerced, move back and take the process I've talked about to forgiveness. But if you have been following this process towards forgiveness, then Please continue with it to forgiveness. I think the reason I've spoken so passionately about forgiveness and if it's a must for us to forgive, to move on is because I think personally have been struggling with forgiveness and not to other people. I actually find it very easy to forgive other people. You know, there are those people who forgive very easily and I'm one of them. But again, forgiving easily might be because you find it easy to transfer blame and to transfer responsibility to other people and to remove yourself from the equation, from the equation, I mean. And therefore you feel validated or you feel like what you did to wrong other people is okay because they also did something. I'm not talking of that kind of forgiveness. I'm talking of forgiveness where you take responsibility, you say, yes, this was me, this is what I did. Um, and therefore, you forgive the other person because you also know you had a part to play in, in whatever happened. So I find it very easy to forgive other people 
what I've been struggling with and for a long time is I have not been able to forgive myself, especially my younger self for the things I did and for the things I did not do. And some of them make me sad even into adulthood and the things I did as a small boy and others not so far away, maybe a couple of years or months ago, and they still affect me so much. Then I realized the reason I'm not able to forgive myself easily, and maybe this might resonate with you as well, is because of, should I call it perfectionism? I feel like I should be doing everything right. Like I should be treating everybody with respect, I should be treating everybody with kindness and that I should always be able to show up when people need me. I should always be able to respond to people's needs when they ask for it. And when I'm not able to do all these things, I usually feel a lot of guilt. And when somebody suffers because I did not respond or when somebody gets angry at me because I did not respond, I tend to take a lot of responsibility I tend to blame myself so much for such events. Then when it comes to letting it go, I find it difficult because I keep telling myself, if only you had shown up or if only you had this done this thing differently to perfectioning, perfectionism, then it wouldn't happen like this. So it is only of reason that I've been able to sit myself down and tell myself, actually it was through reading a book by Vision Lahiani, uh, this book right here, it's called The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. So through reading this book, then I realized I have been pinning myself down on what people and the society expects me to do, as opposed to what I think or what I believe is right. Again, that is subjective, but it is a topic for another day. So when I get to that point, then I realize, hmm, it's high time I forgive myself. So I am still in the process of, you know, accepting that these things happened. So let's say I'm still in the process of accepting that the things I did as a younger person happened. And I think my stage two will be going to the process of saying, okay, I need to let them go and become a better person, forgive myself, and walk into freedom. So if you're like me and you're, you've not been able to forgive your younger self, then I recommend that book, read it, and take yourself through that process. And remember to stay hydrated as you take yourself through forgiveness. And I'll be seeing you in our next diary. I, I actually have it here because I want us to keep all these thoughts as a diary. I want you to come here several months from today and say, hmm, I discovered this channel when I was at this place mentally and now I am here or I was at this place financially and now I am here. So it is a diary and I want us to keep it together. It is an open diary. You can always come back here and read this diary anytime you want because it is an open diary for both of us. Keep hydrated.